Welcome back, everyone, to the F1 Breaking News Show, where we're going to be looking forward to Miami, but also talking about China. First time F1 has returned to China for, I think, over five years. And it was a very dramatic weekend, I have to say. I didn't watch the sprint or the sprint qualifying. You did. There was rain going on there. There was and rain. There was a new track surface. There's a whole lot of stuff going so on. Let's talk about that. Then we'll talk about the race. Then we'll look forward to Miami. And then we'll talk about some of the big drama that's going on between Horner and Toto Wolf, Red Bull, Mercedes, it's rumbling on, Carlos Sainz, all the usual. But Sam, just talk to me about sprint qualifying. How was it? Well, I think to go with sprint qualifying, you need to know like the precursor of it. What they did at Chinese Grand Prix is they actually resurfaced the track. I they heard they did, painted it. I was going to say, they didn't resurface it your traditional way with tarmac. They've actually just done like a bitchman type paint over the whole lot, um, okay. which... Pirelli apparently weren't aware of until the last minute and it was a lottery for everyone. Yeah. And then just to top it off, it then rained for Q3. So you're a professional kart driver. You presumably have been to circuits that have been resurfaced yep. since the last time you went there. What's that like, your approach when you go to resurf? Do you do on track walk, are you noticing it? Or? I mean, when I used to race properly, I used to go for a track, even if I've been to a track a hundred times, I would track walk it every time just so I can walk around, see if there's a new curb somewhere, new bit of tarmac, like you said. Um, nowadays, I don't get a chance to do the track walks, but when you come across a new bit of tarmac, you, for the very first time, you don't really know what's going to happen. Mm. Is it going to grip up? Is there more grip? Is there less grip? It's all like a big lottery, especially as these Formula 1 drivers, they do so much on the simulator. Mm. They haven't had a chance to go on the simulator. It's all brand new for them. So interesting, when I was with Nissan last weekend at Formula E, they go around the track with a secret machine they have that measures the grip on the tarmac, and then they re relay that back to the sim, and the sim driver's ready, and they update the sim with, with okay. the grip. But I don't know if you're feeling the tarmac, you're actually feeling it? Or... I, I, I drag my feet across the floor sometimes, but I don't know if that's my walking style, or I'm doing it on purpose. But yeah, China's something unusual going on, and also the grass on fire a lot. Yeah, it's caught fire three times, yeah. the same part. So something unusual was going on in China. <laughs> but then we saw the wet, well, I didn't see it, you saw the wet qualifying. So how was that? In terms oh, of it was insane. Like, you went into Q3, to start off with, you had both the kicks in it. Well, Salvers, let's call them Salvers. You had both the Salver cars in it. That was mad to go for. It was amazing for um, for Zoo to actually, on his home Grand Prix, obviously, be there. Mm. Um, and then, obviously, Verstappen, not on pole. Yeah. It's not happened this year. That was a shock for me, obviously, yeah. seeing that. Um, Lando having his lap time doing a lap, having it deleted. Do you want to explain what went on there and like what the controversy is a little bit? It's so on the last corner, wasn't it? It was on the last corner. There's been a massive misunderstanding. Everyone seems to think there's a one right, one rule suits all. It's all tracks. Yeah, season. exactly. So Austria, for example, if you run wide there, you get a massive advantage onto the next lap because you're carrying the speed. At Shanghai, you didn't get that because you've got the gravel trap there. So even though you run wide, you lose your your lap time as you're meant to because of the track limits but because you go in the gravel you're not actually advantaged mm. starting the next lap and there was all this uproar about how it should have been deleted because that's how it goes on the other tracks but that is literally yeah. a track by track rule so basically Lando went off in the last corner went into the gravel got his lap time deleted on that lap exactly as it should have been completely fine he then went out and he did a lap 1.7 seconds faster than second Because place. of training conditions, presumably. I don't know, because not everyone else is going faster. <laughs> Lando's was like the biggest standout on that on their last lap. Lando was the only one who went significantly faster. Yeah. Um, F1 did a little thing. They showed his dashboard. They actually showed he'd lost four tenths within the first 100 metres of crossing the start Which line, would have been that going in the time. Which meant he... I, I think that's what McLaren used mm. as like a uh, get-out-of-jail card. We didn't gain an advantage, I yeah. think. And then Lando Pole, Hamilton second. Yeah. We've not said that for, for yeah. quite a while. Brings back Sochi vibes back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Um, interesting one. There was a lot of drama about it. I kind of don't know how I feel about it because I'm used to in sim racing, it's just a rule that if you basically go off in the last sector, you're going to lose the next lap as well. Yeah. I don't know if there's a circumstance where, you know, you could be more careless in the last sector because you know you're not going to get the next lap deleted or something I don't know but yeah interesting one great for Lando because I've been a little bit critical of Lando saying he should focus more but it was a great weekend from all around because you yeah. go into the race Lando does really well finishes P2 Verstappen wins the Chinese Grand Prix uh, two safety cars two in quite quick succession yeah uh, I'll talk about that a little bit because again <laughs> professional car to used to driving 
uh, racing carts where if you spin the cart, you've got to get out, pick it all up. The old, on, the off, old direct drive stuff. Yeah, yeah. Off the ra- on or off the racing line. So you, there's carts flying around and you're walking your cart around. There are a lot of people on social media saying it was really bad that they didn't safety car it immediately when Bottas was yep. out of the car. We're not that... Well, I mean... We, we're quite used to that, but I don't know. Yeah, we... we I mean, it's a completely different environment, mm. but... Um, I personally was surprised myself because it was directly in the firing line. It wasn't as if he was off to one side. Mm. He was literally directly in the firing line. If someone else's brakes had failed or locked up, all they were going to do is go straight and Mm. it was directly into him. I'm really surprised they, one, left it so long for full course yellow and two, then left it so long for the um, full safety car because his car was in gear. You couldn't actually move it. I think if I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not the director, but if I was calling up, like, the car stopped there, it needs to be recovered, either marshals or a truck or whatever, just call a safety car yeah. now. As it happened in, in hindsight, that was the right decision. I think the telescopic lens made it look a bit worse as well, maybe. It could have. I mean, yeah, I mean, the view, the angle and all that, force perfect, pers- perspective. Yeah. yeah. But then we had Perez early on in the race was second. He sort of made his way through, but under one of the safety cars, he decided to pit or decided to pit him, and he lost track position, gained fresh tyres, but obviously didn't work out for him because he never got that trap position back so that gifted Lando P2 and this time he was able to take it convert it but I thought a little bit of an odd strategy to- I mean once again if, if you take out Max all the racing is fantastic from second backwards is fantastic Lando did a great job they way outperformed where they thought they were going to be I've, I've listened mm. to some podcasts about it and stuff McLaren didn't expect to be anywhere but then with this new track surface it really surprised them Ferrari struggled more mm. than you expect Mercedes did a Mercedes. <laughs> Aston, one of their drivers looked really good. The other yeah. one didn't. Um, it was a weird weekend. Lando, I think, deserved second. I don't think Perez would have deserved it at all. His pace was great. He did everything he needed to do. Beat Leclerc by 10 seconds. So that's who, he, realistically, he's racing. Yeah, great result for Lando. Leclerc uh, beat Carlos Sainz. He did. So important battle for him. Aston Martin, let's get on to Lance Stroll. Safety car. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, Lance Stroll basically runs into the back of Daniel Ricciardo, who actually then hits Oscar Piastri. I yep. think gives Oscar Piastri some damage in the McLaren. Ricciardo was furious about it. I think it all stems from Max Verstappen maybe being a little bit funny on the restart, people being very tentative. Just who do you think was at fault? Because oh. Lance Stroll said Ricciardo, Ricciardo said Lance Stroll. It's, it's Lance Stroll's <laughs> fault. There's, there's no denying it. He's just... If you're on a road traffic accident, it's always the person who hits last. Mm. It, it's Lance Stroll's fault. There's no other way to know. He's he's a professional racing driver. He's got to be aware of his surroundings, especially on a restart where everyone knows it all concertinas up, stop, go, stuff like that. And w- what's he doing? Just driving into the back of him. It. And it wasn't even like a small impact. He literally yeah, submarine yeah. underneath him. Yeah, I mean, terrible news for Ricardo because he, he doesn't need any more bad luck. No, I mean, he's been complaining about the chassis, so they've got him a new chassis. This is his first race with a new chassis, <laughs> and now he's outperforming Yuki. So yeah. maybe there was something wrong with the chassis. Yeah, He's got a new one, outperforming Yuki again, and just gets absolutely destroyed by yeah. Lance. It's just not going right off the end of the season. I thought in that moment, it's interesting, I think it's one of the houses, maybe Kevin Magson had sort of gone to the inside, so he'd had the foresight to yeah. see the concertina, whereas I think Lance Stroll, what Daniel Ricciardo said, was Lance Stroll wasn't even looking at... Ricardo, but yeah, I mean, I, I was amazed because that did that cause it? There was another safety car, I can't remember, but I was amazed that happened under the safety car, yeah, basically. Just after that, um, Magson crashed into the Sonoda, oh, uh, yeah, and that's what it's debris from the last corner, and the Sonoda went yeah. this way, put out the second safety car. It got very, very, very messy. I think the last part of the race wasn't super exciting, another safety car would have spiced it up, but. Yeah, interesting one to come back to China. The grandstands were full. I don't know what you made of Guan Yu Zhou getting the Guan Yu Zhou podium on the grid. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's nice to see the history. They kept showing him when he first went there 10 years ago, whatever it was, 15 years ago, and it's nice to see him on track. It's obviously well liked there. Yeah. His grand, he had a grandstand outside his garage. Apparently it sold out in 14 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, when I was streaming the race live at the time, I was like, oh, this seems a bit weird. But then very quickly I was like, hang on. This is, you know, once once in a lifetime, maybe. Who knows? You do that in front of the packed grandstands. Like, even if it wasn't made for him, I would have just gone there anyway and parked on the grid and got out, you know? I mean, he's not guaranteed for next year, is he? With mm. science being available, he's got to go somewhere. Yeah. Where's he going to go? And we talked about this, like, months ago, but apparently the rumour is now that Audi offering big money for science. They, they've, they've got the money bags out. Yeah. So it'd be a good shout for science, I reckon. 
Let's go on to um, Christian Horner and Toto Wolff have been at it because Toto Wolff has been making sounds that maybe Verstappen could come to Mercedes. And then Christian Horner was like, no, why would he go to Mercedes? Mercedes are doing really badly. I feel like Christian Horner has been been under the radar because of all of the issues that happened yeah. earlier on the season. But it's starting to, <laughs> those two again are, are sort of coming back at it. Um, but yeah, we don't, we still don't really know Max Verstappen's <clears throat> sort of where he's going to end up exactly. But it seems like the situation of Red Bull is it's not It's all as calmed down calmed. a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's all calmed down a bit. I, I, Max is going to stay there. Why would he leave? He's got no reason to leave. Um, best car, best driver, team built around him. He has zero in- Zero reason to leave Red Bull at the moment. Let's talk quickly about someone who is leaving Lewis Hamilton. Who made the right decision, Ferrari or, or Lewis Hamilton? I don't really know because Lewis Hamilton had a great race. He went from P18, I think, to P9. Yep. He was complaining about the car a lot. He also did, though, however, massively advantage from the uh, Lance Stroll incident, taking out Lance, <laughs> uh, Daniel... Um, Piastri, yeah, three people, that's three free places there in his favor. Yeah, I am more and more tantalized by just seeing Lewis Hamilton in the Ferrari. Yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting. I think Lewis Hamilton's got the better deal out of this. Yeah, between Lewis Hamilton and Ferrari, as it stands right now, I think Lewis Hamilton's got the better deal. And we spoke about this before, like whether we think Hamilton's going to do a better job than Charles Leclerc. I think the ju- the jury has to be out on that some element. Yeah, but if Ferrari become a little bit more competitive and they've been the second team now for for a while. You know, Hamilton nipping, you know, you know, that's quite an exciting prospect, but we'll have to see. Um, going to Miami next, I don't know what you feel about the Miami GP, the layout, the circuit. You know, it, now you have Miami, Vegas and Cotter as well. Yeah. Miami feels a little bit less special. It does. It's like, it's weird. I'm completely sub, uh, off subject here. It's weird to try and promote so much into America but not letting Andretti in. Yeah, and that was another opposite. thing which kicked off again over the weekend, was yeah. Andretti. He spouted out about it all. I, don't, I just don't get F1 management's idea. What's going on here? They're trying to promote to America. Hmm. They've got the free tracks. The biggest name in America, in American racing... And they're saying no to him. I, I don't get that. Yeah, I don't know if it's holding out for a, for, a, for a deal or something or they want to give Andretti a lower cut yeah. all the way in. But yeah, I mean, you can't have Williams turning up with like half a chassis to, to most events these days, but you don't know Andretti in. Yeah. So, but then once again, the rumours which you spoke about before have been Al- turned up again about Alpine, Alpine selling to Andretti as yeah. long as they carry on using the Alpine motors for a few more years. Yeah, it was Alpine's best result for a long time. Esteban Ocon and P11. Ocon and Gasly were going at it with each other, so it doesn't feel like a particularly healthy environment and we see more people leave the team. But yeah, maybe Andretti coming in. Mm -hmm. But we'll see at Miami. Should be an interesting one Um, around the stadium. It's going to be a lot of glitzy promo, the fake harbour. I was just about to say the fake harbour. And I think probably a Max Verstappen win. (laughs) I'll I'll go with that. Cool. Well, I hope you join us for the next F1 Breaking News show. Let us know what you think in the comments and we'll see you next time.